so far we we know that uh, when we are citing we use Google Scholar okay so we say that uh, the best sources to use uh, to support your points uh, is uh, scholarly sources these are usually more credible than blogs and websites but even then we have some blogs and websites that are credible examples include government websites uh, non-governmental organizations uh, popular news media houses like the New York Times the Guardian these ones may, may also be possible but be very careful when you're using them okay pay attention to the wordings of the question so if the assignment is, uh, is asking for scholarly sources please just stick to Google Scholar do not cite anything that is not available um, in Google Scholar if you see any wording such as five quality sources scholarly sources academic sources uh, they are referring to sources that are scientific okay that are very credible some may actually even ask for journal sources or peer-reviewed sources so like we said earlier a journal is like an online library so where uh, uh, people from a certain field eh, conduct research and post their articles there Okay, their studies or their uh, research papers there. So some journals are peer-reviewed, which means that uh, before a such paper is published, peers go through it. You know who your peers are, right? So before a particular paper is published, for everybody to see, uh, some peers have to go through it. That's why these journals are peer-reviewed. Some journals are not peer-reviewed, okay, but some are peer-reviewed. So uh, you need to identify journals that are peer reviewed. Okay, if you identify an article that is from a journal, you need to just counter check if that journal is peer reviewed in case that uh, question is asking for a peer reviewed uh, article. So when you're on Google Scholar, you can just see if something is from a journal. Okay, you'll see a journal of something. Let me just. Use an example to show that. So, for example, you are. Uh, let me present. Uh, so, let me assume uh, everybody is seeing my screen. So, if you are doing research and you happen to to open this article so if you're gonna cite it if you click cite you will see some information okay so the first part is the authors then followed by the year the title of the site of the article the research paper okay then where it was published so in this case it was published in, by something it could be a journal or just a website called intensive care intensive agricultural care nothing so probably this is a journal okay so if you wanted to know if this article is peer-reviewed you'll go and google out this organization and discover okay check if it's a peer-reviewed organization or not okay uh, if you are working with this one so you can see the authors so the first part are the authors so this is, should be sai and day then we have the year it was published, then the title, okay, it was the title of this research paper, and then where it was published. So this is a publisher, could be a journal, or just a website, or a, a research website, okay. So this one was published by Health Service Management Research, okay. So maybe it has volume, so whatever you're seeing, this, maybe volume 34, okay, version 3. And then these are the page numbers. So if you go to this source, could be a journal. You open, uh, journal, uh, for example, volume 34, version 3, and then you scroll to page, these pages, you will find this article. Okay, So that's how you check uh, uh, whether an article is from a journal or not. If you look at this one, you can see the authors. Okay, You start with the authors, the year of the article, and then you have the title of the research. Okay, and Then of course now that is the last part which is usually written in italics 
you will see the journal's name uh, or the, the publisher, the person uh, who published this article. So this one was published by the Orphanet Journal of Rare Diseases, right? Yeah. So if you needed to know if this journal was peer reviewed, if you just uh, check, uh, just go and Google it out, find some information about that journal. Okay. So is a peer reviewed. You can see the saying: the Orphanet Journal of Rare Diseases is a peer reviewed, okay, open access medical journal. So you have confirmed that this journal is actually peer reviewed. So if the article or if the question was asking you to only use peer reviewed sources, this one will be a good one because you have confirmed that is it is published by a, a peer reviewed journal. That's a simple way of knowing if articles are peer reviewed. But there may be other ways that you can do that. But basically, personally, I do that because I like using Google Scholar. Okay. For the for for other databases that you might be using, we have so many databases. Google Scholar is just one of them. For the other databases that you might be using to get your research articles, maybe some of them will just you know include a title a a a, a note somewhere indicating whether the article is peer reviewed or not. Okay. But for Google Scholar. There's no way they have indicated whether it's peer reviewed or not. It's just upon you to identify where it was published, then count it, uh, go and check if that source is, is a peer reviewed source or not. All right? Yeah. So we we are saying that uh, we we are supposed to be using these sources. Okay. These sources from Google Scholar or any other database that you like, uh, a scholar database like uh, we have CNAL, we have PubMed, uh, we we have uh, ProQuest. All of these are databases for scholarly or let's say scientific uh, sources. So these are the same, uh, the ones that we're supposed to be using. But there comes a time where, uh, a time where you need to also use, you may also use blogs, okay? We say that you get the ideas from blogs anyway. However, when it comes to citing, you need to cite or use scientific resources. However, there may come a time where you may have to even cite blogs. Uh, remember, for a scientific article to be ready for publication, it takes a lot of time. It may even take a year. So, basically, the researcher identifies a such topic, a such gap, okay, contacts research. Uh, collecting data might take a while. Data collection usually takes some time because you have to talk to people if you're using questionnaires. So, it may take, it may take a few, uh, a long, a, while, uh, in a short while before you have your data. And then you need to analyze the data. After analyzing the data you're now submitting and everything is ready, you've compiled the paper, now it's time to submit it through your journal. So when you submit it to your journal, <coughs> the journal takes uh, time to process before that article is made published. For peer review journals, you'll have to wait until your peers review your article, your study, or your research paper. So peers might have to take uh, some time on it again, depending on how many they are. They might have to, to read your research paper, counter check if you have uh, you know you have you have overstated or understated facts, and if they are not satisfied, they'll uh, they'll turn the paper back to you for you to amend. So the process might be back and forth. You know you are sending it, they are sending it back to you until they are satisfied. That is the only time now the article will be published. So you realize it may even take a while before. A uh, study that you finished today is is made available for everybody to see. So, and uh, uh, lecturers or tu or professors or teachers have a habit on testing people on current issues. Okay, so like um, I don't know what is happening today in, in in Kenya. For example, I think if it was in Kenya, they would ask you something about, you know. Uh, the earthquake announcement, the one that Madhavadi was uh, merging up with Ruto. So that's a very recent event uh, that could, could not have been uh, already researched. Okay, Even if somebody had already researched that event, uh, the article may not be already uh, up for us to, to see because they take time. So what happens? You've been given a topic on a recent uh, thing uh, or a developing story and uh, because it's so recent, scientists are still working on the pa their papers so that uh, we can refer to them later. At this point, you may need to rely on other sources that are not necessarily scholarly or academic. A good example is uh, COVID-19. 
when uh, COVID-19 uh, struck the world, that is around late 2019, and then in, in January 2020, I was working on an assignment on COVID-19. Okay, somebody sent me a, a, a you know a, a paper on COVID-19, and then I went to Google Scholar. There was completely nothing on COVID-19 on Google Scholar because research articles had not been ready yet. In fact, I think it was until March or April 2020 when I first saw the uh, when I, I saw the first articles on Google Scholar about COVID-19. So you can see it takes several months before these articles are, are available. But at the end of the day, you need to still cite. Okay? You need to cite materials. You need to, to cite to use sources to support your ideas. Okay? So at this point, uh, you, you can now uh, go back to the other sources which are just available through, through Google. Okay? So I want us to look at uh, some of these situations. Uh, let me see effects of uh, let me just do something random. So maybe you're working on this topic, and uh, for some reason you can't find any uh, re relevant resources on Google Scholar. But you are supposed to cite things anyway. Okay. The question is that you you need to cite uh, resources. So at this point you can just open any blog. But again. Try to look for blogs or websites that are they are looking more credible. This, this includes government websites, non-government organizations, news media sources, okay? They include such such sources. So try to avoid blogs that are very local in nature or not well known. Yeah, so even if you are using these blogs, okay? Just try to be very careful with them so that you don't cite somebody that uh, might not actually be credible in any way. So try to look at credibility. Try to go for sources that you believe are more credible. Okay. So this may include uh, non-governmental organizations like the UN. Okay. Sources like uh, news media sources, including the BBC. But again, when I'm I'm saying news media sources, uh, try to avoid local news media sources. Okay. Like in Kenya, you. You shouldn't be doing a paper for a U.S. student and then you're citing a, a study published by the Royal Media Services or a Citizen TV, okay? Unless that is that something is very specific to Kenya and there there's no wider media coverage. But if there is, try to go for these other recognized media houses like the BBC, uh, CNN, Al Jazeera. The issue is that these bigger media companies might have adequate resources to employ experts, okay? as opposed to these local ones, which might not have uh, enough resources to employ full-time experts to comment on certain topics. Remember, for, for, for the case of uh, a, a, source, a, a media house like Citizen TV, you will find um, Gatete Njoroge commenting on politics. Yet Gatete Njoroge is not an expert in politics. Okay, He's just a journalist. But for these other media houses, they'll get a correspondent for every area. And this correspondent is usually an expert in that area. Okay? And then they'll most probably have hired that person full time. So if there's anything uh, regarding, let's say, there is something that requires the media house to publish, not really news, but just something that's happening on the ground, they may get the input of medical experts, okay, if it's uh, something to do with COVID. This is as opposed to Zen TV, which might uh, not really have a full timer, paid uh, medical expert to comment on, on COVID nineteen. In most cases, they have to call people on interviews and then interview them. But it, it's always good when you have somebody on payroll responsible for that. Suppose just depending on interviews, interviewed uh, the interviews you, you you call people. Okay. So go for those media houses that are well known. Okay. And then look, uh, uh, consider peer, uh, things like if it's something to do with health, you might want to consider popular blogs like Mayo Clinic, okay, Healthline. Those are very popular blogs in health-related issues, so you might want to, to even trust them. Or you might even uh, find uh, a healthcare organization that is well-known, that is also publishing articles. okay. Uh, government sources like the CDC. When, with this I'm talking with regards to health issues, okay? The CDC. Uh, is a credible source, you might want to use it. The WHO is a credible source when it comes to matters of health. Uh, when it comes to matters of economics, you might want to look at the World Trade Organization, what are they saying, okay? 
uh, The Economist, I think there's a magazine called The Economist, matters related to business, you might also want to consult Forbes, okay? We also have popular social media uh, companies like LinkedIn, okay? So these ones, you can also look at what they are saying and even cite them because they have built a reputation for for being credible, okay? Uh, for things like uh, life lessons and, uh, you know, advices, you might even cite TED Talks, okay? You might go to, if you see a link for TED Talk, you can even use that one as a credible source, okay? So basically, try to look at credibility again. Don't just um, cite anything you find. Now, the problem comes because when you're using things from Google Scholar, you don't need to create the reference. We just click cite, okay? And then it gives us this. So we just copy paste this. But if you are citing a, a blog like uh, this one, this website, you realize you, you, you'll have to to create uh, this yourself, right? You have to create this yourself. But when you're using Google Scholar, you just copy this. Okay? So if you're using this source, that's where I want to teach you, okay? How to create it. So we have several citation generators that you can use. We have some websites where you just uh, copy paste this URL, paste there, and they'll create something like in a Kahivi for this source, okay? But before you go to that, I like to teach you how to, you can do it just uh, manually. But this appears to be a scholarly source. This is on Google, yes, but it's a scholarly source, okay? You can see the way they even have a doing number. Remember, doing numbers are for scholarly articles. But uh, let me look for a blog, because this one you can find it on Google Scholar. If you search this title on Google Scholar, you'll find it and you can just cite it, because this is a scholarly source again. Let me just try to identify. You can see the, all this journal of ethics. This is a scholarly source. I don't know. There's a way you can know if something is scholarly or not. If you see Omandikana by somebody, this is a scholarly source. By this and this and then the year, scholarly source. Okay, you can Google Pia, you can scholarly sources. Okay. Come by CDC. One they trust CDC is very credible. So this CDC I'm sure is an author. Author to New York company. Okay. To know they find out. So Kishai Fungua, you can now create the reference from there. Okay. So the format for websites and blogs, when you want to cite websites and blogs, the format is identify the author, author surname. Okay, then identify the year, okay, put a full stop, then the title, title should be in italics, put a full stop, publisher, put a full stop, then the URL, okay, it is the format. So, title in a file in italics, okay, so I'm just going to control I. So if you see any source online and you wanted to create a reference for it, just identify the author. Sometimes the author might actually be just a corporate author, not really a person. Like in this case, I don't think you can find a particular person, somebody's name who wrote this article. Instead, it's just the CDC. Okay? The CDC is the person uh, writing this article. Okay? So uh, once you uh, identify that this, the author is the CDC, you'll have to CDC. Okay, put a full stop. Then the year this article was published. So just go back to this website and identify where they indicated any year. So you can see they have not indicated this article, the year this article was published. So we will say no date. Okay, it's n.d. Alright, right, then a full stop and then copy the title. It has the title Lifestyle Risks. a full stop then who is the publisher of this website so mostly the publisher will still be the company's name the website's name but if you want to confirm you can do, go to the about section okay about cdc so you can see the owner of this website is cdc so cdc is the person publishing this website okay so the publisher is again cdc full stop and then copy the url the url is just the link in that address bar okay 
what you can share if you wanted to share you send to some of the URL so just paste that there so we say the title should be in italics okay so there you have this is what will appear on the reference page okay let me just do this. this is what will be on the reference page and then in the index citation as always it, it will be into brackets cdc cdc comma n d because we don't have the date right yeah if there is the oral citation variant you can see according to the cdc into bracket no date okay, and then you have your sentence over there so this is what we'll have on the reference so you realize you've just created this reference from scratch okay if you identify this article you realize it did not have an or it was not a scholarly source so you can't find it on google scholar for remember google scholar is a search engine just a database but the good thing is it also helps us generate citations besides being just a database for scholarly sources you can also use it to create citations okay to just copy paste it. generate the citations for mla ph cargo word vancouver yeah so let me look at another one that maybe has an author let me just change the topic for me. Uh, so like this one is Mayo Clinic. So if you open it, Uh, I read somewhere that when citing blogs, you have to indicate the date you accessed it. Uh, I don't think that is true, okay? Uh, I use Scriba and Scriba don't necessarily indicate it. If it's available, you will indicate it in the references, okay? Not in the in-text citation. Not date accessed, actually, by the way, okay? Uh, maybe you are referring to APA 6. APA 7, they don't need date accessed. Okay. We will see how when you're using a, a citation generator that it will exclude the data accessed. Okay, it's not a mandatory to to show the data accessed, but I think that it should have been APA seven. I don't know, but at this point, I don't, I don't think you need to worry about that, right? Yeah. So this is Mayo Clinic, all right? But uh, you can see the author is Mayo Clinic staff. So if you wanted to create a reference for this one, you'll follow the same format that you are following. Where you have uh, you have the author, it could be a person or a corporate author. Corporate author, you mean the company or an organization, and then the year, and then the title, and then the publisher, and then the URL. Okay. So under the year, if the year is given, even the month is included, you can just include the month here. Okay, there's no problem. But if no month is included. Don't include it. But in the index citation, please don't include anything else besides the year, right? Don't include months. So at this point, let us see the author. It is my clinic staff, right? So at this point, there's no surname where we say it's, you pick the surname, leave the other name. This is just, you know, it's not a surname. There's no splitting between two surname and what have you. So once you have that, uh, you look on Angalia, when was it published? So can you see any date? Yeah, Amandika, 2019, deck 21st. So, 2019, December 31st, 31st. So, if the month is, kama kuna mwezi maandiko hapo, okay, kunaandika pia, laki unanza na mwaka, so unandika in reverse, okay. Let me just counter check my recorder. So, if that is available na and then the title we just copy the title okay and then who is the publisher Mayo clinic right my clinic you may do it because i know this is my clinic but if you want to confirm who is publishing this website you can scroll to the about section Okay, if there's any about section or EECC and on Kangapa, you can even write it in full when you go. 
who's this is the publisher I'll just write that in full in the query. Okay, and then the URL. So uh, as a manga title in a fake uh, italicized right? Come on the blog. So this is what will be on the on the reference page. Eh? So this is what we will put on the reference page. Yeah. Love coin text Uteka into bracket my clinic comma my clinic staff comma twenty nineteen. We got an element twenty twenty twenty. Okay. Come on, Ile system ya ka ya enemy, you know. As my clinic staff. Okay. Explain or according to my clinic staff into bracket 2020. Okay. Yeah. So let us see one that might have uh, an actual author. Kama hi kumfano tuwe kama tapata author. Pia yeah, ina author. So. We'll treat it as a corporate author, okay? News report, new report academy, I think. Then you make a general author, because I only see the, the date. So I couldn't get to find you to share find those things when you're author. So you treat it come when you find your clinic. But sometimes when they go to author, you can send a report by somebody. So you go to Angali. Take it in a few chini. So I'm a summon and I'm a publish. I'm a hini sources on my to me up in here. Uh, so they haven't included the, uh, the author, so to China. To China, you may include the author so that you can see. Yeah, so when you say it here to me, you just generated the citation. And uh, now wake up. Yeah, here again, get author. So that would come to smart social, smart, smart social. And then we make a, the dates, the title of your view. No, make author, Azeka. What about this one? No author again. Eh? Why are this one lucky? Yeah, you could author. So you wanted to say this one, like author ni Vinay Pra wherever, Pra Japati. Okay. So we identified Zinayake. But according to APA, we only care about the surname. Sindi yo. So surname yo msay ni nini. Surname yake ni yo project something. Ya wikiona Zinamti mandiko wa hivi bila comma between them, ina masha yo project something yo surname. But wikiona yi kuna Vinay comma Pra Japani, ina masha Vinay yo surname. Okay. When you write your name beginning with the surname, you must separate them with a comma. After the surname, put a comma. Okay? So at this point, I chat to you in Prajapani. I chat to you copy your tender delete. You copy from this side. So Prajapani. This one is text only. But Nataka, surname. So Prajapani, comma V. So you initially here in Nengini. Kama ni otha wengine ungeka tu and kama ni wa William and but sasa hizi ni mmoja tu. Ni February 23rd, 2021. So, 2021, Feb 23. Okay, what is not the title? I thought I copied this. Then we need 
to get the publisher yeah, I'll publish the website my to attack take page na jiona pote ni angalia uko chini unione hajaandika Tech Prev. This name I can't read it. Tech Prevway. Right. So we check Prevway. Okay. And then you get the URL. So on the title you can tell us it. So this is what will be on your reference page. Okay? Doesn't you follow your format? Kwa index citation itaka tu kawaida ni project pani comma 2021. Si yake mambo mambo ya February hivyo. So hii ni ile unajifanyia mwenyewe but kuna kwanga na websites mingi za kufanya hiyo generation na kuunda hiyo reference. Mimi upenda kutumia Scribble. Okay? So unaweza na tu online angalia hizo citation generators ziko mingi. Choose yenye unaona tu ni poa kwa kwa itumie. So mimi nakuja kwa scriba.com and I have a video ni Trust explain sana nje kuna video kwa channel yangu. So itakuuliza tu hiyo kitu ni nini? Is it a website, journal, book, report or image? Kuna hata other even if it's a YouTube video hizi vitu zote itakusaidia. Forum post, image, internet source, include YouTube video. You can even cite a YouTube video. Okay? So at this point najua ni website, sawa? Just a website, right? So itakwambia ni enter there the page url to retrieve information so i'll, I'll, I'll come to that uh, blog and then i can I just copy the url and paste here so you try to retrieve information sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so what it does it in a tumia software flani ku scan e page okay so that in at after inaangalia title inaangalia surname mwaka so sa zingine unapata kuna kitu imeandikwa in, in big very big fonts kama hii hii pate hii ki advert kiko hapa if create hii ndio title just a software okay i pate kuna kitu kingine maandiko huko yenye ni date if create hii ndio date ya hii article kumbe sio hii ama ichukue jina mtu mwingine ameandikwa somewhere hapa if create ndio author so ni poa tu u confirm pia so ili try itajaribu ku ku retrieve information on this page nikae na scan hiyo page inajaribu ni artificial intelligence inaangalia mali kuna name title so title inakwanga ni bigger fonts So kama kuna kitu kingine hapa imeandikwa in bigger font inaweza inaweza kukosea. So unaangalia kama ni hii. Ndio. Ya yeah, una click kama ni hiyo una click. So ita fill out hii field like title nikuwekea. Just confirm kama ni hiyo title, ndio? That is you get the wrong thing. Angalia authors. Na ni mefikiria by ime imefikiria jina by ni part of the jina huyo author. No. Imeweka BV Prajapati nimefikiria b ni jina yake bado so toa hiyo b ndio back to v alafu publication date ndio hii date accessed ni date ya leo so unaweza today ukitaka but it's learning necessary unaweza to update of access ni today click to today to insert date ya leo then imepata website name ni tech proofway so no ime 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 imepata hizo vitu zote so unaje tu na click site so sikisha fill out kila kitu kama yenye ya feel sometimes ni kosa kuona jina. So kama imekosa kuona jina unakuja unaandika manually, si ndio? Just go to this, get this name, unakuja una paste hapo kwa last name. Kama kuna author wengi na iliona tu mmoja, you just click add contributor, alafu una add hao wengine yenye lisa ikuona. Sawa? So, then ukisha fill out kila kitu just click site source. Yeah. So this is what will be on the reference page, right? Yeah. This is this is what we we'll put on the reference page. And then uh the surname ni you know the Japan. Yes, it is how you can some some things up. So this is all what we to record. You know that copy paste to reference page and left good to go. Left coin text you know what to do.